Good evening, YouTube. You guys are now watching another segment of the Cali Effect King of Games, and today we're going to be teaching you guys how to be a better Yu-Gi-Oh player overall. Whether it is casual play or competitive play, we're going to teach you guys to advance your game and elevate it to the next level. Before we can get into this video, I just wanted to let you guys know, you probably should be subscribing to this channel, and even more importantly, if you want to join the biggest gang that I know, make that bell on the side gray as well, because... Cali Effect Notification Gang is just too strong. Without further ado, let's bring to you how to be a better Yu-Gi-Oh player. There are three different types of Yu-Gi-Oh players, or three broad types of Yu-Gi-Oh players. There are the casual players, the competitive players, and the collectors. But for the sake of this video, we're going to completely exclude the collectors. Like, how, how can a collector be competitive? How can a collector get better at collecting? Huh. That actually could be a Yu-Gi-Oh! 101 video. But more of the importance, we have to realize the difference between casual players and competitive players. The difference between casual play is that it's more light on the rules. You're using lower tier decks more often than not. There's no structure in or strict rules to follow inside of casual play. And players often allow each other to take back bad plays. Now, casual play isn't the best way to become a better player overall because of those said things. In order for you to become a better Yu-Gi-Oh! player, you have to work into the confines of a structured environment where you would be winning high level events and casual play almost does the exact opposite but that doesn't mean you can be that that, bleh, that doesn't mean that you can't be a better casual player and i don't know how long have you guys noticed this but yes this is all off the top of my dome i'm a freestyler i'm like lil wayne all right a great guy for casual players is to play lower tier decks. I mean, not only does it prevent your opponent from being triggered when you're playing a tier one deck against their battling boxer deck, it also allows you to learn newer strategies. A lot of my videos that have an orange rating on it, or even, I guess, before that just didn't look competitive or a lot, came from me playing casually or watching other players play casually against each other and be like, hey, that's a very interesting idea. It also helps in competitive play, whereas when you, if you decide to switch over to competitive play and you play against a strategy you don't know of it's going to be kind of hard to surprise you if you've already played through these bad strategies or i'm sorry lower tier strategies i actually have a, a sponsored player of mine it's a really funny story he went to an la regionals and he got scraped by a herald of perfection deck the reasoning why he got scraped is because he didn't know what the cards did and if you would have played more casual, then there's a possibility that he would have understood what Herald of Perfection does. So yes, being a casual player at first and switching over to competitive play does have its advantages. The next thing is play with different sets of rules. Play with older decks. Goat format is a pretty good way to play casually and still learn some old mechanics. There's also Dragon Ruler format, which I don't even understand because most casual players hated Dragon Ruler format during Dragon Ruler format. So... I'm not even going to argue with that. But please even play the EQ format. There are so many different sets and variations where you can play with life points. You get two extra normal summons, eight cards per draw that make the game a lot more fun, but also give you a different viewpoint of how the game could be played or even better yet, just give you a broader aspect of the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. All right, now since we are done with casual play, we can get to my favorite type of play. And as Diva likes to say, I play to win. So we're going to talk about competitive play. Now, competitive play in definition is using anything in your means to gain an advantage and possibly a win over all of your opponents in a high level, lower level, whatever event. Now, competitive play normally requires a lot of work, a lot of money, and a lot of time. The most important thing is that what works for someone competitively doesn't necessarily would work for you so for example there is a deck that won a ycs level event its specific build might not work for you because at your local level event you are probably play, playing against lower level decks so main boarding certain cards make no sense so that's the most important thing you want to do when starting off in competitive play is analyze your meta see what your opponents are playing and even your best opponents are playing and then develop a strategy from there so if my opponents were all playing true draco I'd probably be playing true draco zoo because it has a distinct advantage over pure true draco 
It's just common sense at that point. If you make bad plays, do not allow your opponent to take them back or to allow you to take them back. Now, I stress this in competitive play hugely because if I make a bad play and my opponent allows me to take that play back in a competitive perspective, this prevents me from gaining the knowledge that I needed from making that mistake. If you make a mistake and you pay for your mistake, then you are more likely to remember that mistake and not repeat it again, as opposed to allowing your opponent to take it back. So I urge you guys, do not fool yourself into thinking that if you are allowed to take a play back, it does help. And I know it sounds counterintuitive to what I just said, using anything in your advantage to gain the win, but unless it's in the finals, then you probably should be learning from that experience. Play actual competitive decks. Now, I know this is extremely hard for people, especially seeing that competitive decks tend to cost a pretty penny. We're actually going to be making a Yu-Gi-Oh! 101 how to invest properly into these said competitive decks. Let's just get this video to as many likes as possible so I can release that one. That one is pretty pivotal because, I mean, if you're not playing the best competitive deck, you're not putting yourself in the best position to win. You're lying to yourself. You might as well play casual at that point. The no, Another important thing, and I see a lot of players mess up on, is playing against players that are actually better than you. What I have seen a lot of players do over time is play against players at their level or worse than them, and that doesn't necessarily make you better as a better player. The reason why you play against better players is because they're going to do things that are, unpre are unprecedented as a lower level player would do or a player of your level. They're going to teach you things, even if they're not saying anything to you, by completely 2-0 scraping you. But that doesn't actually follow or it doesn't actually coincide with the next rule. You need to take notes. I mean, take notes of what they're playing, how they're playing, why they're playing, when they're playing, if they're playing it upside down, underwater, if they're cheating, if they're not cheating. Take notes of all of this. This could be a huge factor into you winning games. And while I don't approve of or condone cheating or rule sharking to win the game, you're going to see it a lot in a competitive level event. The next thing is learn every competitive strategy because knowing your deck is only half the battle. If I only knew my deck that I played, then more often than not, when I played against another competitive deck, they would have a significant edge. Not only would they know my deck because we will automatically assume that they're better than us, they would also know what they can do to work around it without me knowing what I can do to work around them. That's why playing a competitive deck is only half a battle and knowing every other competitive deck possibly tier one and tier two is pivotal for winning said events well thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the cali effect i really hope you guys enjoyed this video if you would like to contribute to my patreon account by joining the patreon gang then go ahead more importantly you can also send through paypal gift also, we have an eBay and TCG site that you can visit to buy the cheapest cards from your favorite Yu-Gi-Tuber. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy.